stuffed shells. It's one of those classics that led me, as a child, to believe that all Italian-American entrees were just different configurations of pasta, red sauce, and ricotta cheese. I haven't had it in years, and I'm so excited. Step one is get a giant pot of sauce going. You could get away with half the quantity I'm making right now, but it's always good to make extra and freeze it. I'm just chopping up two big onions, doesn't matter what kind, and then I'll peel and chop at least half a head of garlic. Nice big pot over medium-high heat, tons of olive oil in the bottom, and in goes the onions. I'll just stir those pretty frequently until they soften and start to go brown, maybe 10 minutes. In between stirs, I can start opening three or four 28-ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. Each of those is about 800 grams. When you need them, you're going to need them fast, so get at least one open in advance. Onions are browning, and this is when I usually put in my garlic. You could put it in from the start, but it'll burn if you don't stir constantly. Then I'll put in one of these little six-ounce cans of tomato paste, 170 grams, and let it fry for a sec. Ah, I knew I should have been using a wooden spoon. The spatula just is not rigid enough to bash that stuff around. And right when you're terrified that tomato paste is going to burn like that, ah, in goes the can of tomatoes that you were careful to open in advance. Scrape the bottom of the pan to deglaze. And I'll put in two or three more of these big cans. And you certainly don't have to do this, but it's nice to put in a glass of wine, red or white, grind in a bunch of pepper and whatever dried herbs you want. I've got oregano, thyme, and dried basil. Big pinch of salt to start with, and I think I'll pour in more olive oil. I like lots of oil in my sauce. Stir that up, and then you can just simmer this over medium-low heat while you do everything else. Just stir it frequently like in between every other task you do. You let it sit for too long, the stuff on the bottom will burn. Next, we do the cheese filling. I've got a pound and a half of ricotta cheese here, 680 grams that is. I do think full fat ricotta tastes better, but part skim is all they had at the store. It's fine. We can make it smoother and meltier with a pound of mozzarella, 450 grams. And I'm using fresh mozz, but any kind is fine. And to give it some stronger flavor, I've got seven ounces or 200 grams of Pecorino Romano. This is the hard grating cheese that I grew up with as opposed to Parmesan. These big, sloppy, red sauce Italian-American dishes were generally originated by immigrants from southern Italy, like the Ragusias, and Pecorino is popular in the south. Pecorino is basically Parmesan, but made with sheep's milk instead of cow's milk. And then when you get down to the tiny square that you can't grate anymore, you could eat it or throw it in your sauce. It needs a stir anyway. It always needs a stir. Take your mozzarella and grate it up as fine as you can. Some people set some of that mozzarella aside to melt over the top at the end. I don't like to do that. I will grab some of that Pecorino and save it for dusting at the table. Before I get rid of my grater, I'm going to grate a couple more cloves of garlic. You could chop them, but I think for the cheese filling, I want the garlic as fine as possible, and you don't need much because it isn't going to get cooked very much. All this goes into a nice big mixing bowl, and you may think this seems like a lot of cheese, but this will make the right amount of filling for a one-pound bag of shells. You'll see. In goes my pound and a half of ricotta, ricotta being a cottage cheese-type product that is recooked from the whey left over from other cheese making. It's relatively lean, high protein, which makes it work as the primary bulk of this whole dish. Speaking of protein, in goes some eggs. I'm doing four, which is maybe kind of a lot. You don't have to use any, but it makes the filling set into something more cakey. Without the egg, the filling is more crumbly. It tends to fall off your fork when you're trying to eat. A huge amount of black pepper, but no salt. The pecorino is salty enough in there. Last thing is to chop up some fresh herbs. This is parsley. I'm just pulling it off the stems. Bits of thin stem are fine, but the thick ones I try to leave behind. Same deal with this bunch of basil, and then I'll just mow through that. A lot of people put blanched spinach in the filling. You could do that. Frozen spinach works great for that. Just drain it thoroughly before you put it in. Again, I'll grab some of this and reserve it for garnishing at the table. The rest goes in the filling, and now you just get in there and smash it all up. Get a nice homogenous mixture. It feels almost like a dough by the time you're done with it. And there, you can see that I've got a big pot of water coming to a boil for my shells. While I wait, I can scan my grocery receipt with the sponsor of this video, Fetch Rewards, whom I'll now briefly thank. Fetch is a free app you download, you sign up, and then super easy, you just take pictures of your grocery, restaurant, or other retail receipts. It tells you what to do, it stitches the pictures together when you upload them, and then you immediately get back reward points. Points you can use to save money like almost anywhere you could think of. Amazon, a million stores. I like this feature where you can sort rewards by the range of points that you've accumulated. These are all savings I can have right now with the points I've got. If you shop online, it's even easier. You just hit this e-receipt button and it scans your email for eligible receipts. The app does all the work for you. It's simply the easiest way to save money on groceries and all kinds of shopping. Here, I'm going to get a discount on Hulu. Do us both a favor and sign up using my link in the description. Use my code Ragusia and you'll get 4,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's a limited time offer for you. Hit my link, download the app now, use Ragusia to get 4,000 points with your first receipt. Thank you, Fetch. Now, salt that water. Jumbo shells, really big ones. Smaller ones are just impossible to fill. These are from Italy, so it's a 500 gram package, which is a little over one pound, and it says they're cooked for 15 minutes. Well, then I'm going to boil them for maybe 
12 minutes. Yes, it'd be nice if I had a bigger pot, but I'm using my big one for the sauce. It'll be fine as long as I stir these to make sure they don't stick to the bottom. You want to boil these until they're pliable and you can fill them, but they should still be a little crunchy because they're going to cook more in the oven. Three minutes less than the package directions usually works great. Drain them into a colander, and then I would rinse them with cold water to stop their cooking, to rinse off the starch that would cause them to stick together, and also to cool them down so you can handle them. My sauce is looking nice, and it's time to finish it up, give it a taste. If your instinct is to stir in a little sugar, try stirring in some more salt first. Salt really offsets the bitter notes in canned tomatoes, though there's no shame in putting in a pinch of sugar, too. That's Clemenza's trick. How's Pauly? And these tomatoes I had were pretty thick to begin with, so I'm actually going to loosen this back up again with some water. You could hit this with a stick blender, too, if you wanted it smoother. I like it chonky. My oven is heating to 400 Fahrenheit, 200 C, and into a baking dish goes a good layer of tomato sauce, enough so that once all the shells are in here, displacing liquid, they'll be up to their shoulders in sauce. Grab your parboiled shells and your filling. Some people load the filling in with a spoon. I think that's a huge pain. Some people use a piping bag. That'd work great, but I hate loading piping bags. I honestly see no problem with just smashing this in with your fingers. Then I like to position them cheese side up in the sauce so the cheese can brown a little bit. Here, Lauren's going to do a few. It helps if you kind of smoosh them to expand that opening. Some people top this with some more tomato sauce and then some mozzarella. I feel like that just turns this into a lasagna. If I'm going to go through the work of filling individual shells, I want to see individual shells. I don't want this all to bake into a single mass. Some people bake it uncovered. I like to cover it with foil and then let these steam cook in there for 15-20 minutes until they're bubbly. And hey, let's go full-on Jersey Shore and make some garlic bread with this. The key is honestly just to use a huge amount of butter. Not one, but two sticks of butter. I softened in the microwave on low power. That's half a pound, 225 grams. Half a head of garlic chopped goes in there, a whole bunch of pepper, and then enough salt to make this taste a little too salty. It's seasoning the bread, remember? This was salted butter, so I didn't need much more salt. You could mix in herbs too, but I prefer to sprinkle them on at the end. That's enough garlic butter for a big baguette. Here's half of it, cut in half, and then you gotta really slather it on. You want there to be enough to melt down through the bread as it cooks. Put it on tray, the butter is gonna leak. When the shells are cooked, I'll just pull the foil off and turn on the broiler, aka the grill, and get a little color on the top. If you just bake it uncovered the whole way, I think it tends to come out kind of dry. There you go. I'll throw my garlic bread under the broiler for a few minutes, just until it's brown and crispy. Some herbs on top, chop into chunks, nice and crispy. Since I made extra sauce, I can kind of sauce the plate before I put on the shells. If I have bread, I like to have some extra sauce that I can mop up. Now, I had 25 shells in that pan, enough for four or five people to have a big dinner, but I had enough filling and intact shells for 40 or 50 additional shells, two of these pans. Cover them and freeze them without baking them first. Then all you gotta do when you get home from work is throw the frozen pan covered into a cold oven. Turn the heat on 400 Fahrenheit, 200 C, and walk away. 45 minutes to an hour later, it's both thawed and cooked. Be careful not to overcook the filling, it'll get gritty. It should be bubbling, but still look kinda wet. Just pull the foil off, turn on the broiler for a few minutes, and there's dinner. For whatever reason, baked pasta dishes seem to get even better when they have been reheated. Now, while I often describe Italian-American classics like this as big and sloppy, like the tank-top-clad individuals who often prepare them, I make an effort to keep mine kind of tight, reduce the sauce nice and dry, and don't put on too much. The way my grandma would make this, the plate would be flooded with orange water. I like a drier, firmer texture, but you do you. And one thing you can do is pre-order one of my Summon Forth the Upside Down Bear t-shirts, available on my bonfire store for just one more week as of the posting of this video. The shirts should arrive December 8th through the 17th, so it's a perfect gift. Link is in the description. Now put on a white tank top and sit down and eat. Make sure to get a sauce stain on your belly. That really completes the look.